A population is a group of interacting members of the same species that have the opportunity to mate with each other. These populations can be described by their distributions as clumped, uniform, or random. Sounds easy enough, but these patterns can be based on scale. So we might say this pattern looks random, but if we zoom in, it might look more clumped. And even further in, it might be uniform. It also might be deceptive about which individuals are capable of mating. Even though these two patches of wild daisies may be far apart and seem to be part of different populations, there may be frequent mating events going on, with a little help. Even when you have established a defined population, there are probably links to other populations. This webbed connection with other populations leads to the creation of a metapopulation. Metapopulations can help to explain the persistence of prey in an area of high predation. For instance, this Trillium grandiflorum might be completely eaten by deer every year. So how do you continually see it in this location year after year? Trillium grandiflorum is maintained even though the deer continually eat it because it is replenished by one of the linked populations in a metapopulation. In this type of relationship, populations can serve as sources for individuals or sinks. A source population frequently has individuals that e-migrate from, and sink populations have individuals that immigrate to and rarely leave. So the trillium population with the deer would be a sink, and the trillium population that continually are supplied from would be considered the source. Organisms differ in how they disperse. Those differences affect if and how metapopulations are structured. In an article by Fisher et al. in 2009, researchers found that dispersal, or movement that is not directed, in water voles is affected by the surrounding population's density. Population density can either decrease or increase an organism's likelihood for settling in an area. It can decrease immigration by acting as a barrier or a social fence. Or it can increase immigration through social attraction. In the case of water voles, it does both. Dispersing water voles will choose lower density sites to settle in, social fence, but they have to have some contact with another member of the population, social attraction. The authors speculate that this site selection trait helps to keep metapopulations connected because water voles won't disperse too far to mate with other members of the population. Other traits that might affect population structure are growth, maturation, and number of offspring. For instance, a negative correlation has been found between size of the organism and population density. So larger organisms typically have lower densities than smaller organisms. And a population may appear random, but if you have synchronized birth in a population and they have many offspring, it may appear clumped. Behavioral traits can also affect distribution. Organisms that have social behaviors that attract other members of the species, such as mating lex, will create a clumped distribution, whereas an aggressive behavior, such as pecking from nesting ground birds, can lead to a uniform pattern, with a separation distance of a little more than a peck. Instead of a characteristic of the population itself, the underlying cause for distribution may be the environment. Organisms may clump around resources that are clumped, such as watering holes or light gaps from tree falls. And the interconnected populations of a metapopulation may be due to fragmenting of a habitat, either naturally or man-made. <laughs> A 
population of organisms may seem like an easy concept, but how do you know what is an interbreeding group of individuals? Once you determine a population and the appropriate scale to look at, the distribution can be clumped, uniform, or random. The distribution could reflect characteristics of the organism's natural history or underlying environmental characteristics that impact the organism. One reason for knowing how a population is distributed and moves is when you look at how to conserve species from going extinct. How do you know how much habitat it needs? Which population represents sinks in the metapopulation, where you don't have to worry if they are impacted, and which represent sources? Meaning that without them, you might cause local extinction, called extirpation. And then you would miss them dearly. This has been a Paper Pushers production.